This morning on Wake Up With Hope, Ronnie Mills will be back with exciting Hope Channel testimonies. We will talk about positive connections, and later we will share a moving devotional with you. Plus, we will have a special celebration going on, so stay with us. Good morning and welcome. Are you ready for this? Honey, are you ready for this? I don't welcome know. <laughs> to the 200th episode of Wake Up With Hope. Woo! 200 <laughs> episodes, can you imagine? Wow, every morning is a new opportunity to share the love of Jesus with somebody. And we're so glad that you're here today to share this joy with us. Amen. Happy Friday, friends, and happy April. April already, where did the time go? The flowers are blooming and spring is officially in motion. We are so grateful to have made it to the fourth month of the year with you. And on today's program, Ronnie Mills will be back with exciting Hope Channel testimonies. And we're gonna talk about positive connections. And we're also going to have a very powerful and moving devotional. Plus, we have a celebration going on, but first, this day in history. On this day in history, in the year 1700, English pranksters played practical jokes on each other and popularized the now known annual tradition of April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day, or All Fool's Day, as it has also been called, has been celebrated for several centuries by different cultures, though its exact origins remain a mystery. Some people think it started in 1582 when the change from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar took place in France. Those that were slow in getting the news that the new year had moved to January 1 were celebrating it during what used to be the end of March through April 1st. These people became targets for jokes and hoaxes. In Great Britain, the tradition spread during the 18th century with people being sent on fake errands or having fake tails or kick me signs placed on their backs. Some of us may know somebody who really goes out of their way to play a prank or a joke. You. <laughs> She speaks the truth. <laughs> you know, sometimes the preparation of these pranks are so elaborate that you can tell it certainly took time to do it. There is a greater preparation God wants us to accomplish, though. It is the preparation, my friends, of our hearts. You know, in Matthew chapter 24, there are signs outlined that point to the coming of Jesus Christ. And though some of these things have been happening for many years, none of us can deny that the intensity with which the disasters and crimes are happening today are increasing. You know, it's true, Jesus is coming soon, and He longs for us to place all of our effort possible and all of our energy into preparing to meet Him. So if you long to be ready for the soon coming of Jesus, our free Bible study guides at hope.study are a great place to begin. Well, friends, we aren't fooling around when we are mentioning that we have a very special celebration going on today. Can you guess what it is? We gave you a hint earlier. We mentioned it in the teaser. Uh, it is our 200th episode today. Yes. <laughs> Can you believe that? 200. Today marks that day, and we are so thrilled to be celebrating this major milestone with you. After all, we do it for you. Yes, we do, and we love it, too. It's our joy. And we joy. want to thank you for tuning in and spending 200 mornings with us. We wow. thank God for His guidance and His providence leading this program every single day. We also want to take the time to thank the team, and it's a big one, that makes this program come together. The producer, the director, camera operators, audio team, teleprompters, yeah. makeup team, editors, assistants, everyone. Thank you for being dedicated yes. to spreading the hope that can only be found in Jesus. And this team here is awesome. Amen, amen. Friends, are you connected to the ultimate power source? Are you plugged in into His power? Well, this morning, our friends from Bible and Christian Living join us to help us make sure we stay connected.
My friends and I always joke about this hobby. We say it's 90% fix and 10% fun. This little car and I, we have a lot of history together. This was the first radio control car I ever bought and I had great dreams and aspirations about how much fun it was gonna be. Turns out I had colossal crashes and many of them. Spent more time in the workshop than uh, on the playground, so to speak. I thought I was just a bad driver. And then after many hours of fixing, rebuilding, diagnosing, I discovered there was a problem with the power supply and the electrical unit. thought that a tiny little power supply like this could cause so many troubles to a remote control car. Turns out that uh, it might be the same in life as well. Sometimes it's the little things that we don't get right that, that uh, influence and that come back to bite us in bigger ways. Little things that give way to bigger things in our lives. This little power supply had a big influence on the kind of signal quality that my little car received from me as the driver. And when its power supply wasn't working properly, it just did its own thing. It went where it wanted to. It accelerated when I tell, told it to slow down. It went left when I told it to go right. The result was it collided with walls and it ended up very broken. And I'm thinking, it's very much the same for us. When there's stuff going on in our lives that interfere with the signals that the Creator intends to send us, we start to live our own lives according to our own dictates, do what we want, when we want, how we want. Sometimes we even think that's the very definition of freedom. Turns out that actually that's the definition of slavery. So let me ask you, where are you getting your signal from? What's directing your life? Who are you obeying? The Bible conveys this interesting idea that God wants us to live our lives in such a way that we are in harmony with the frequency of heaven, that we're in tune with His signal and His messages. The way that this actually happens is through the gift of His very own presence called the Holy Spirit who lives in us and through us. You see, what God offers to do for us is to actually come into our lives in such a way that He's a constant companion, someone who's always there communicating with us, influencing our thoughts, helping us with our choices and our decision making. It reminds me of that old hymn, those old words, well known, goes something like this. Live out thy life within me O oh, Jesus, King of Kings, is God living out His life through you? Are you a vessel in harmony with Him? Are you receiving His signals on a daily basis? How is it with you? When we return, Ronnie Mills will be here to share some exciting Hope Channel News updates with us. And also, don't forget to visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to take a look back at recent episodes and see what else is going on at Hope Channel. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. What have you enjoyed about our show so far this morning? Hey. Hey, are you okay? <laughs> are you there? April Fools! <laughs> <laughs> All right, send us a message on Facebook and let us know. I told you, he's a prankster. <laughs> well, Ronnie Mills is here with us to share Hope Channel ministry updates. Ronnie, thank you for being with us this morning. Good morning, Saints, and happy Friday. The times we live in have really given a new appreciation of the necessity of prayer. And I'm so excited to have with me today the co-host of Hope Channel's Let's Pray broadcast, Pastor Chris Holland and Ms. Season Cromwell. Welcome, Pastor Chris and Season. Hello, hello. Good to see you, Ronnie. Glad well, Season, here. for anyone who's never heard of Let's Pray, what is this TV show about? 
you know, it really just is a, an, an amazing opportunity to gather together as the body of Christ and pray. But officially, it is a global interactive prayer program that um, we take about 30 minutes um, each time we go live and we lift up the requests of the community. And these requests are pouring in through multiple platforms. Um, and if you know the community has never heard of it, come join us because it really is just a beautiful, powerful time together. Amen, worldwide and on many platforms. Well. Pastor Chris, how do you make sure that this show is not impersonal? Well, I tell you, Ronnie, the most important thing is that the show provides a number of avenues to interact. First, people can call in and talk to our prayer partners. Our prayer partners pray with people. They counsel with people. They can call a prayer partner anytime they want, 877-7-LET'S-PRAY, and that keeps it very you interactive with the audience. But then in addition to that, Ronnie, we have our prayer room, which is at hopetv.org forward slash let's pray, where people can leave their prayer requests, they can leave their praises. But probably my most favorite way of interacting is on Facebook. We go live on Facebook and there in the chat, we interact with people from all over the world, Ronnie. It is so exciting. In addition, Ronnie, you provide prayer requests for me from a number of our viewers. And so it makes it very personal because we speak to people by name, specific prayer request, and we pray for those requests right there live during Let's Pray. Wow, that's beautiful. Their prayers are pray to God by the individual name, not big one big group prayer, but each person as an individual before the throne of God, amen. And speaking of Amen. prayer season, of the many prayers that have come in to Let's Pray, do any stand out in your mind that God has answered? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's almost too many, do you know? Um, so I would like to say first before I answer that there are multiple styles of relationships that we have with other people's prayer requests. For example, we have been journeying for a long time long time with uh, Chaplain Brad Ray and Christy Ray out of Australia over their baby girl Imogen, mm -hmm. who has a very rare form of cancer. But we see God's faithfulness in sustaining them through this time. We get some positive reports. She is still on that journey as a baby girl. However, the father has continued to involve this community and uh, given us an opportunity to be co-laborers and to support this family in longevity. Um, we also have a, a, a miraculous overnight healing from a little girl named Aurora who's left uh, excuse me her right arm it's called a brachial plexus injury when she was born was completely zero movement we prayed and the next day that little munchkin's arm was all over the place it was a miracle and finally just recently in the last few weeks we've had a new family member in let's pray his name's JD and JD had COVID-19 mm -hmm. lost his father and I believe his grandfather all over the same weekend and then then, family, he lost his job. Mm -hmm. His comment just last night on the program in that Facebook thread that Pastor Chris had mentioned was, I don't know where I would be without this prayer community because we have just been loving on him. And not just Pastor Chris and myself, this community is consistently reaching out to each other, praying for one another. It's truly the place where you don't have to pray alone. Amen, amen. Pastor Chris, there may be someone today who's watching Wake Up With Hope, and this is the first time they've heard of Let's Pray. Please let them know what days and times they can tune in so they no longer will have to pray alone. Hey, people can just tune in Monday through Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It is rebroadcast several times throughout the day but 8 p.m. Eastern Time to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Thursday. Well, thank you, Pastor Chris and Season, for blessing us today by being on Wake Up With Hope and letting our audience know they don't have to pray alone. And to ensure that no one ever again has to pray alone or face these unique times in despair, please call in your financial support at 1-888-446-7388. Again, that's 1-888-446-7388. Or donate online at hopetv.org slash donate. Again, that's hopetv.org slash donate. God bless you for your support. 
Thank you, Ronnie, for sharing those exciting tidbits. And coming up after the break, we will share today's devotional thought. Don't forget to visit us at hope.study to claim your free Bible study guides and encourage and experience the life-changing power of the Word of God. Wake Up With Hope will be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for staying with us this April morning. It is now time for our devotional thought. Enjoy. Good morning. I'm Dr. Carlton Bird, Speaker Director for Breath of Life Television Ministries. And I'm thankful that you've joined this morning for Wake Up With Hope. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, today we thank you for another day of life. Another day where we can realize and experience hope in you. Bless us now as we spend this time with you and with one another. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Today we're going to talk about prayer. And I need you to understand that the intent of prayer is not necessarily to inform God of something. Because if the intent of prayer were to inform God of something, it would suggest that God isn't all-knowing. But let me remind you, God is omniscient. God is all-knowing. And the Bible is clear that God knows what you need before you even ask. So then, if God knows what I need before I ask, why pray? So we have somewhat of a quandary here because God knows what we need before we ask, but God still tells us to ask in prayer and that he will give whatever we ask. But don't misinterpret the text. God doesn't give us what we want when we ask, but God gives us what we need when we ask. There's a difference between need and want. Every prayer from us is heard and it's answered by God. But if the request is wrong, God says no. If the timing is wrong, God says slow. If you are wrong, God says grow. But if the request is right, the timing is right, and you are right, God says go. Jesus says ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Now notice here, we're using three verbs, ask, seek, and knock. And they're what we call imperative commands. They're necessary directives, which means Jesus wouldn't have said it if Jesus didn't mean it. The Lord then expects every believer to be active in prayer. Prayer then is not an option. He knows what we need, but yet we have to ask. But not only that, when you study the Greek text in the New Testament for this text, there are two basic kinds of imperatives. There's an aorist imperative, and there's what we call a present imperative. Now, the aorist imperative is a command to do a particular thing at one specific time. But the present imperative is a command not only to do something, but to keep on doing it indefinitely. Present tense then implies continuous, persistent action. In our text in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus is speaking in the present imperative tense. So then what Jesus is saying in the text is, not only must we ask, but we've got to ask and keep on asking. We have to seek and keep on seeking. We have to knock and keep on knocking, which is why we associate prayer with the acronym PUSH, because you have to pray until something happens. But there's more. These present tense imperative verbs, ask, seek, and knock, they have a natural progression of action from least aggressive to most aggressive. In other words, there's a reason Jesus puts these words in the order that they're in. Jesus is saying not only must we engage in continuous persistent action, but he's also saying that the very words ask, seek, and knock suggest an ever-increasing intensity in prayer. Step one is asking. When you ask someone something, you're making a request of them. Asking in prayer is to make a request of God. We ask something of God when we have a need, and we ask something of God because he can provide for all of our needs. 
If we want to receive, we must ask. Step two is then seeking. Seeking is asking plus action. We seek when we need something of value to us. There are times when we need to take an active role in the prayer process. If we want to find, we must seek. You got to ask, but then you also have to act. And then step three is knocking. Knocking is asking plus action plus attitude. This implies our petition in asking, our purpose in seeking, and our persistence in knocking. We knock when we're shut out from what we need and desire entrance in. When we're trying to get in a door, if we want entrance, we must knock. The text says, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. It's continuous action. It's intensified, aggressive action until we get what we need. So then don't grow weary in asking God for what you need. After all, doesn't the word of God say, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. So then we have to ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. And this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that whatever we ask, we know we have. And we have not because we ask not. Jesus said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. When I was younger, when I was a young kid, we used to sing a song and the words to the song went something like this. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Back then, there were no cell phones or smartphones, and, and we were then also seeing you can call collect because he'll accept. Tell him what you want. The word of God says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I would hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. We must pray without ceasing. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. Because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Friends, prayer is the most important conversation of your day. Take it to God before you take it to anyone else. So just ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. You must knock and keep on knocking. May God bless you is my prayer. Thank you, what a reviving message. And thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope. If you would like to learn more about our program, rewatch a segment during the weekend or share with a friend, please visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up. We look forward to starting the week together, so don't forget to join us on Monday at 7 a.m. Jean Boonstra from Voice of Prophecy will be sharing a devotional thought, and we will have much, much more. You don't want to miss it. And don't forget if you enjoyed today's devotional thought and would like to learn more, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. And friends, that is not an April Fool's. It is free. It really is. It's free. You can't wait for you to be able to take advantage of this wonderful offer. And so before we end this day, we want to share with you our Bible promise for today. It's found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. And the Bible says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know, this short and simple promise is awe-inspiring. When we recognize our need of God and when we humble ourselves and realize just how much we need Him, when we say, yes, Jesus, I give you full control of my life, the promise is sure. The kingdom of heaven is yours. Amen. Well, we're ready to start our April weekend now, friends. We hope that you take these reminders of God's love with you throughout the weekend. We truly hope you have a wonderful weekend and we can't wait to see you on Monday morning. Amen. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, that the Bible is true, that you are true, that your word endures forever. And Lord, I'm so thankful that we can take your promises and stand on them as a firm foundation. 
Lord, today we want to keep our focus on you and we pray, Lord, that you would guard our hearts and keep us from stumbling. Keep us strong in Christ as we trust in you. And, and I pray, Lord, that there would be a song in our hearts today, that our hearts would be full of joy because you live in our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen.